station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We hear you loud and clear. Well, good morning. This is Rhea Mistra with Gizmodel. I'm so glad you were all able to join us today. The photographs we've seen come back from the ISS have been really something to see, which made me wonder what the most memorable site you've come across was, whether a space view or something you saw on the ISS itself. We well, you know, I think uh, both the sunrises and the sunsets are so beautiful that uh, they almost don't even look real. And uh, we've seen several since we've been here, and it never gets old. We have uh, Jeff Williams, who just joined us, and he's seen uh, many more than us, and uh, I think he may want to say a couple words about it as well. Yeah, I would just add sunsets and sunrises are beautiful. They're always spectacular, especially um, as they occur uh, behind varying weather, and especially when you have big, huge thunderstorms that are uh, going up into the atmosphere, uh, that adds a lot of variety to it. It just, uh, it just um, never gets old. You know, one of the most intriguing things for me to watch has been the way that each new expedition to the ISS seems to make the space station just a little bit more homey. We've seen a coffee machine, an experimental vegetable garden, Having logged quite a bit of time on the ISS now, between the three of you, what element of home would you like to see added next? You know, we're just chatting here trying to come up with something because uh, we have lots of the conveniences of home. We have a refrigerator. It would be good to have a full-time freezer. Uh, that would be a nice feature. Maybe some ice cream on board. We've got uh, movies we can watch, connection with family on phone. So uh, I think we're in pretty darn good shape. Tim and Tim, you've been on the ISS for a few months now, but Jeff, you've only had a few days so far. How long does it take to feel to start to feel comfortable again in microgravity? Is there an awkward learning curve at all for figuring out how to orient yourself again? Uh, well, I think I can say this time that there was really no learning curve. I felt right back at home when I got here. Um, in previous flights, it, it has taken, well, the last flight probably took a couple days anyway, and then the one before that, I would say that you can feel an adaptation for as much as five or six weeks. But this time it was uh, almost as, as if I never left. I hear you've got a new 3D printer headed towards you for the resupply mission, um, headed up later today. Any plans for what you're going to make first? You know, uh, oftentimes when we have experiments like that, the plan is actually dictated to us on what we're going to print. You know, if we, uh, if we had choice in what we could use that 3D printer for, then I'm sure we could be quite creative for the science that's involved. If you did have that choice, what might you make? You know, that's a good question. You know, I think perhaps, uh, you know, there are some things here in, in zero gravity that are lots of fun to play with. You know, we like to play with water and food. And if we could come up with something that was unique to zero gravity in terms of how we'd be able to demonstrate our experience here in zero gravity, that would be great. So I think we'll have to put more thought into that to come up with that perfect item. to us from the Space Station's Destiny Lab today, and I was just wondering which experiment each of you is most excited to see the results of. Yeah, you know, I mean, we do so many experiments during a six-month mission. I think um, there's about 250 planned for 46, 47, and lots of those experiments will actually just run um, autonomously from the ground with very little interaction from us, but uh, some of them do require a lot of inter interaction, and, of course, many of those experiments are also done on, on our own human bodies as well. Um, and for me, I, I do enjoy the human physiology experiments. I think it's nice to be able to contribute to the science that's 
going on on board the space station for the benefit of everyone back on Earth. Um, and uh, also, um, there are some exciting experiments. I know Tim might like to say recently he's been involved in some flame combustion experiments, which from a, you know, I was watching over his shoulder, I found them fascinating to be involved in as well. You know, I particularly liked uh, this experiment that we did in uh, a glove box. It's right in front of us in which we, we uh, were experimenting with uh, different materials and, and how combustion in zero gravity works with those materials. And so I think for the combustion scientists, they're very excited about it, and we're looking forward to uh, seeing those results hopefully in the near future. Jeff, you'll have logged the most time in space of any American astronaut by the end of this mission. And I was curious what you've seen change from your very first mission um, up to this one. Well, that, uh, I mean, the most obvious thing is the station itself. The first time I was here, it was two modules before Expedition 1 flew. Uh, and then uh, about a half a year later or so, Expedition 1 launched. And since then, there's been 17 years of continuous operation of the space station and over 15 years of continuous human presence on the space station, now over 47 expeditions. Um, and subsequent visits, of course, we were at different stages in the assembly, uh, next time about halfway through. Last time here, uh, six years ago, we essentially finished the assembly. Now it's a fully operational, full utilization mode, an orbiting laboratory. Um, and it's uh, it's huge, and uh, we're still all very impressed. Just uh, when we when we look at it out the window, we got some uh, a, f a couple windows that we can see much of the station, and it's it's very very impressive, very impressive facility that this uh, international um, partnership has uh, has managed to put together. I've got a question for one, from one of our readers for you. Um, what's your favorite space recipe to make in the ISS? And they also want to know if you swap meals amongst different crew members throughout the mission. We're just thinking about that. You know, what we find is that, uh, you know, we have lots of great foods up here, but you learn to combine different foods in certain ways. We're pretty fond of tortillas because uh, you can put just about anything in a tortilla and it uh, combine the different foods. And on occasion, we'll exchange foods with our, our Russian colleagues. Uh, Tim Peake has some special foods up here that we've had a chance to share. And so it uh, definitely adds to the experience and uh, the quality has been great. Resupply mission that's headed up towards you later today. Is there anything that you're most looking forward to receiving? You know, uh, every one of these vehicles has a little bit of fresh fruit on board. I think we'll be excited to get some of that that fresh food. Um, there's always a resupply of. Uh, of different items that we need on board, and so we're excited about getting that, especially some of the science. Uh, there's one experiment that I think is going to be very interesting in which they plan on lighting a fire inside um, the Cygnus vehicle as it departs. So it'll be interesting to see what the results of that science are. Uh, but we're always excited to get new equipment on board because it means that we can do our job better here and, and get the science done. Well, this is our last question here, it sounds like. So I was just curious, what destination in space, besides the International Space Station, of course, uh, would you most like to hit next? We know I think the International Space Station is just a wonderful research platform and it's paving the way for future exploration of the solar system. Um, and there are so many exciting places to go. I think, you know, the, the moon certainly offers many opportunities for further exploration and, and further resources that we can utilize and obviously stepping stones on the way to Mars as well. And, um, you know, we're starting to work more and more closely towards that target of a, a manned mission to Mars and having just completed the uh, for Scott Kelly and Misha Kornienko, the one-year mission on board the space station, um, you know, we're constantly learning about how we can overcome the challenges that face us on that journey to Mars. So I think the future of human spaceflight over the next 10 to 15 years is going to be incredibly exciting. Well, thanks so much, 
guys. It was such a pleasure talking with you all. Have a great rest of the mission and a safe flight home. Thank you so much.